everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. In today's video, we're going to create this amazing text animation. Open After Effects and create a new composition. I'm naming it Dynamic Text Animation. Click OK. Now create a new solid layer and name it Background. Choose any color you like and confirm. Next, go to Effects and Presets and search for Gradient Ramp. Apply it to the background layer and adjust the colors to your preference. I'm setting the start color to a lighter shade, but feel free to use any colors that suit your design. And this is how it looks now. Great. Now go to the Tools panel and select the Text Tool. For this tutorial, I'm using a specific font with a size of 376 pixels. You can download the font from the link in the description. Instead of typing everything on a single layer, I'll place each letter on a separate layer. This way the letter O will be on one layer, N on another, and E on a different layer, making animation easier. Once all the letters are created, select all text layers and align them to the center of the composition. Now adjust their positioning to ensure they are evenly spaced. For example, move the O slightly to the left and the E to the right. To focus solely on the text, temporarily hide the background layer. With everything set up, we're now ready to animate the text and bring it to life. Now let's see how we can animate this text. I want each layer to scale up from a specific anchor point. Sounds simple, right? First, grab the anchor point tool by pressing Y on your keyboard and place the anchor point at the desired position. This way, the animation will feel more dynamic. To focus on a single letter at a time, I'll hide the other layers and start with the letter O. Make sure you're at the first frame, then open the scale property. Add a keyframe, place this scale keyframe at the one second mark, and then change the scale value to 0% at the first frame. Let's refine this animation to make it smoother. Select all keyframes, open the graph editor, and if your graph looks different, right click inside, choose Edit Speed Graph, and adjust the curves to create a smooth ease in effect. This will make the animation more natural with a gradual acceleration and deceleration. To enhance the animation further, let's add motion blur. If this option isn't visible, right click in the timeline, go to columns and enable modes and switches. Activating motion blur will add a subtle blur effect, making the motion feel more fluid and professional. Now let's make this even more interesting by adding an RGB split effect. First, select the letter O layer, go to Effects and Presets, and search for Shift Channels. Apply it to the layer, then change Take Red From to Red while turning everything else off. Now duplicate this layer twice. You can easily duplicate these layers by pressing Ctrl plus D on Windows or Command plus D on Mac. This shortcut is super handy for speeding up your workflow. If you'd like a dedicated video on the most useful After Effects shortcuts, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to create a guide to help you work faster and more efficiently. For the second copy, set Take Blue From to Blue and disable the rest. For the third copy, set Take Green From to Green and turn off everything else. Right now, it looks the same because all three layers are stacked perfectly. To create the RGB split effect, select the top two layers and change their blend mode to screen. This will merge them and bring back the white color. Now zoom into the timeline and move each layer a few frames apart. This slight offset creates the RGB glitch effect, adding a cool separation between colors, and that's it. Now the text scales up with smooth motion, motion blur, and a dynamic RGB split effect. Now I'm going to complete the rest of the letters as well. To speed things up, I'll select all the letter layers and duplicate them. Then I'll move these new layers to the top and shift them forward a few frames from the original layers. This staggered placement will create a nice overlapping effect. Let's position these layers at the center to keep everything aligned properly. Next, I'll replace the text on these new layers with the next set of letters. I'm using this specific word and to save time, I'll fast forward through this step as I duplicate more layers to complete the entire word. 
Once that's done, I'll check the animation, and this is how it looks so far. It's already looking great, but I want to add a bit more dynamism to the movement. To do that, I'll select all the E layers and adjust their anchor points. I'll place them right at this specific position so that when they scale, they move from the correct origin point. I'll repeat this adjustment for each E layer, and now the animation feels more natural. Let's do the same for the N letters as well. I'll place their anchor points right at the bottom center so that they scale up from there. After adjusting the timing a bit, we now have a really smooth and visually appealing motion. Let's take a moment to align everything properly. It might take a little time, but getting the alignment just right will add a more dynamic and polished feel to the animation. Great, I love how this is coming together. Now let's bring back the background layer. I'll select all the letter layers, right click, and choose Pre-Compose. I'm naming this composition text animation and hitting OK. Then I'll fit the screen to 100% so that we can clearly see the final animation. To make it even more interesting, I'll change the blend mode of the text animation layer to Difference. This creates a cool inverted effect that enhances the overall look. But we're not stopping here. I want to add one more effect to give the animation even more character. With the text animation layer selected, I'll go to Effects and Presets and search for CC Griddlers. I'll apply it to the layer, then move to the one second mark and add a keyframe on the vertical scale. Now I'll go back to the first frame and change the vertical scale value to 550. I'll also uncheck the Cut Tiles option, which will allow the effect to flow smoothly. Now we have this really dynamic look. To refine it further, I'll press U to reveal all keyframes, select them, and press F9 to apply Easy Ease. Then I'll open the graph editor and adjust the curves to create a smoother motion. Once that's done, I'll switch back to the main timeline and finalize the timing. Since I want the animation to last exactly two seconds, I'll move to the two second mark and press N to set the end point of the work area. And as you can see, it's looking much better. The next step is to create the shadow effect. To do this, I'll select the text animation layer and make a duplicate of it. Then I'll enable 3D for this layer by clicking here. Now I'll press R to open the rotation settings and adjust the X axis rotation value to around 80 degrees. This will give the shadow a proper perspective. I'll also reposition it slightly to align it with the text. I'll go to effects and presets and search for CC radial fast blur. I'll apply it to this shadow layer and adjust the center value to around 800 pixels. To enhance the blur effect, I'll increase the amount value to 94. If you look closely, you'll notice that the shadow has some sharp edges, which don't look very realistic. Let's fix that. First, select the shadow layer and rename it to Text Animation Shadow for better organization. Then, go back to Effects and Presets, search for Linear Wipe. Apply it right below the CC Radial Fast Blur effect. To soften the edges, change the transition completion value to 40% and adjust the angle to 180 degrees. Next, increase the feather value to around 90, which will help blend the shadow more naturally. Finally, tweak the transition completion value down to 3%, which will completely hide any remaining sharp edges. Now, fit the screen to 100%, and this is how it looks. The shadow effect is now smooth and realistic. For the final step, Let's add a lens flare to enhance the overall visual appeal. Create a new solid layer and rename it Lens. Then go back to Effects and Presets and search for Lens Flare. Apply it to this layer and change the lens type to 105 mm prime, which gives a bright and cinematic look. Next, change the blend mode to screen so that the flare blends naturally with the composition. Now position the flare at this specific location. To animate the flare, go to the first frame and add a keyframe for the flare center. Then move to around the five second mark and adjust the X position of the flare to create subtle movement. And that's it. The animation is now complete with a realistic shadow, a smooth motion blur, and a beautiful lens flare effect. Thanks for watching this tutorial. See you in the next one. Until then, good luck and peace.